Hey everybody, Kyle Mike here from mlon.com. Join me, Nate Atkins. We're in Seattle uh, in a hotel room, um, uh, parting it up. Uh, getting ready for the Lions Seahawks uh, wild card. First round of the playoffs. It's a big game, Nate. Nobody I have seen is taking the Lions. They're a big underdog. Eight points is the last line that I saw. Nationally, locally, everyone's picking the Seahawks. Do, do you give the chance uh, to the Lions of winning this game? Yeah, I give them a chance. I don't think they're going to pull it out, though. I've got Seahawks winning 23-17. to It's a game that I think the Lions match up reasonably well with the Seahawks because the Seahawks have some weaknesses you can really exploit. They mm -hmm. haven't defended the pass well without Earl Thomas since he's left. Their offensive line is something they cannot hide. So I think there's some things in the Lions' favor. But can they go on the road? Can they do it late against that front seven when the crowd is roaring? I'm just not sure they're there yet. So I think they're in the game, but I think they fall a little short. Uh, Earl Thomas went down with his injury in week 13. Since then, the Seahawks are 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They've lost at home to the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. They barely beat the uh, dysfunctional 49ers by two points in the season finale. This is a different team without Earl Thomas. The, the, sure. the defense is not the same. They allowed 30-plus points to both Green Bay uh, and Arizona. Uh, I mean, normally they can get the, get it done with defense, with the running game, but there's no Marshawn Lynch. That This team is 25th in rushing, and they're a little bit better in recent weeks with, with, with the return of Thomas Rawls. Russell Wilson has looked a little bit better, mm -hmm. but his numbers are, d are down across the board. He has a terrible offensive line. I think the Lions can go after Russell Wilson. I think they can, they can keep us a low-scoring game. They can stay in it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Lions will be right there. I, I think in the end they lose. I, CenturyLink Field is such a home field advantage, it's going to be a real challenge. I think in the end the Lions fall short 24-23, but they're right there and a couple bounces of the ball the right way. I really do believe the Lions can win this game. Mm -hmm. I think the best matchup in their favor, like you mentioned, is going against that offensive line. And it's also the fact that Tyler Lockett's not out there for the Seahawks. He's the big play guy that stretches the field. And so when the Lions are playing their cover four defense, they're going to move those safeties up. They're so adamant about stopping the run. So if they can move their safeties up, have them play more aggressively, and win matchups against a weak offensive line, they've got a good shot at that. What I want to really see, though, is on the other side of the ball, can they move the ball enough uh, yeah. you know, without the deep pass to kind of kind of stay in this thing and be there at the end of the game and be able to, to grind out scores of their own? I think, it, I agree, it's going to be harder for them to score than to, than to stop the Seahawks. Yeah, I was here a year ago when the Lions played on Monday Night Football. Um, I'm telling you guys, you, you can't understate the, the, the significance, the impact of the home field advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read about it, you hear about it, but it's, it's, you, you can feel the noise in the floor of the press box. You can feel it here in the soles of your feet. It's a crazy uh, atmosphere, venue. The, the, the fans are smart. They're into it. It's going to be a real challenge for the offense. Mm -hmm. It's going to be noisy. It's going to be chaotic. And the Lions, have, let's face it, they have not played well on the road this year. They're 0-3 outdoors. They're, I believe, uh, they're 3-5 they're and five away from Ford Field. They're, they're not mm -hmm. a good road team. And you amplify that now with this, this terrific home field advantage. It's going to be a real challenge, particularly for the offense. Uh, Matthew Stafford has not played well no matter where. The past few weeks, the, the, I think the finger is an issue. He says it's not, but he, his numbers speak for themselves. There's five interceptions in the four games since the injury. Uh, completion percentage is down about 10, 10 percentage points. Mm -hmm. um, I just I don't think they'll have quite enough to, to pull it off. But I do believe the Seahawks offer one of the better matchups for this team. Yeah, it'll be there for the taking because with Earl Thomas not out there, they don't have a guy they can put in single high safety to eliminate these deep throws to make you throw these interceptions across the middle. They've tried it with Stephen Terrell, and it hasn't worked. They're mm -hmm. 30th in pass defense since Earl Thomas went out with only one pick. So... Theoretically, Stafford, with his big arm, should be able to, to, to take advantage of that. But you're right. With the finger injury, he struggled with some throws, uh, his touch on throws down the sideline. And adding to that, can Marvin Jones, can those receivers get open against their own matchups down the field? We haven't seen it for weeks yeah. and weeks. And this is still a really good Seahawks defense in a lot of ways. The plays will be there, but I just I just don't know if the lines on the road will be able to make them enough. I'm a little worried about the offensive line, too. They're down. They've already scratched Travis Swanson, so we'll see Graham Glasgow again at center. He's been mm -hmm. a little up and down, I think, there. Uh, but the bigger question is Riley Reef. He's listed as questionable. Could play. We saw more out of him on the last day of practice this week, but mm -hmm. still limited. He hasn't had a full day of practice in more than a week. And now, so basically, you're going to combat Michael Bennett, who can line up anywhere, but more than anywhere, he's going to line up across from the right tackle. Right. Either you're, you're starting a guy in Riley Reef who's battling a hip, hasn't been right in more than a week, missed mm -hmm. last week's game, has not practiced fully in more than a week, or Cornelius Lucas, who has barely played all year. He's been your fourth tackle all year. Um, it's, there's not a lot of good solutions there. I think you know Seattle gets very creative with, with, with what they do with their front. Mm -hmm. Bennett goes all over the place. I, I, there could be some 
problems there for the Lions, particularly in pass protection. Uh, it's been up and down, and, and with the threat of Benham, he's just such a dominant pass rusher. It could be a real issue for the Lions. Yeah, and even on the other side, Taylor Decker, who's played very, very well, he's going to have his hands full with Cliff Averill, who's one of the, as we all know, one of the best speed rushers in the NFL. That's where Decker's still developing. And then in the run game, I think is the hardest part for the Lions, is they've started to get that going, Zach Zenner. But it's it's just very simple. It's an it's a shotgun uh, run up the gut sort of uh, sort of offense. That's hard to run against Seattle's defensive line, who's so quick and agile in space. And you're going to ask Eric Ebron to sort of pull across uh, the formation to do sort of a kickout block uh, against either Michael Bennett or KJ Wright. That's a lot to ask for. So. You know, I think they're going to have to win by throwing the ball downfield. And like I said, the plays will be there. But, you know, is Stafford and, and Marvin Jones, can that connection be there when it hasn't really been there for weeks, I think is a big question. That's what we got. Should be a good game. Uh, we'll, see. we'll see what happens. We'll be out there. Uh, for Nate, I'm Kyle. We're MLive. Keep it right here.